Bienvenidos a una nueva edición de Droid, en esta ocasión es un especial con la, los pormenores de la visita del elenco de En la Oscuridad, Star Trek en la Ciudad de México y queremos agradecer a la gente de Paramount Pictures México por las facilidades otorgadas. Ojalá y disfruten este especial. The original series, um, but if, like yourself, you're a Star Trek fan, you get rewarded for knowing certain things, relationships, characters. Um, but the goal is to make a movie uh, for moviegoers uh, that that might not know anything about Star Trek. It's a big action adventure thrill ride with characters that I think you can meet in this film and still fall in love with. Gracias. The the approach was to Um, used some techniques that had not been used before in 3D. I often would get headaches watching 3D, and uh, we had an amazing team led by uh, a stereographer named Corey Turner, who had worked on a lot of movies, and he wanted to try some things that, that he had not had a chance to do before, including finding ways to minimize some of the eye strain that can happen, and also because we shot nearly a quarter of the film in IMAX, which is a huge format, The resolution of the image is extraordinary, and that plus the 3D and these new techniques, I think, make for a pretty cool visual experience. Um, there's a lot to learn from Star Trek because it's such a well-constructed universe already. Um, I mean, to imagine the future, if you try and do that, is a very difficult thing to do. And I think the detail with which Gene Rodenberry did it is kind of mind-blowing. So I learned a lot from that. I also learned a lot from working with JJ, whose energy um, continues throughout the day however late you're working. Um, and also it's nice to feel part of a group of people. You know, we've gone around the world on this tour with this film and shared it with people, and that's been a very special experience for me. Chris? <laughs> um, I, uh, I've learned a great deal from, uh, from Jim Kirk. Um, I enjoy his spirit of adventure and the fact that he, he wears his heart on his sleeve for, for the most part. Um, Uh, you know his strengths are his weaknesses. Unfortunately, you know if he if he's angry, he he is really angry. If he he is sad, he's going to be really sad. He is a a confrontational uh, man, and I appreciate that about him. But I also think it's that impulsiveness and that lack of a censor that uh, can get him in trouble a lot. And the great fun uh, for me in this film is that in, in the first, I got to play uh, this character that was so self-assured and so confident and so very much what I thought to be a, a born leader, uh, but a man that really uh, had to get in touch with himself a lot more in this film within the first 15 minutes. You find him kind of struck down to ground zero, broken apart, uh, a man whose self-assuredness is um, uh, replaced by an incredible amount of self-doubt, and that, kind of, that existential crisis he finds himself in is, if he's good enough, can I do this? Was I born to be a leader? Am I a good enough captain? I thought the real, the real challenge and the beauty of playing this character is that he was a weak hero, and to have a weak hero try to lead these men and women into battle, um, uh, grasping at straws really uh, was very exciting for me. Anecdota. Yo creo que disfrutamos tanto eh, colaborando juntos. Eh, JJ establece un ambiente de, de humor de confianza y, um, y también de mucha disciplina. Por lo tanto, sabes que vas a ir al trabajo a, a, a dar lo mejor de ti, pero lo vas a gozar en cada momento. El, la bendición de, de, de ser parte de, de una franquicia que, que ha sido tan impactante por más casi, casi 50 años es el mensaje que, el, que Gene Roddenberry creó para este concepto de un mensaje de paz. Él imaginó lo, imagi lo unimaginable. Él quiso ver en un mundo utopian, él quiso ver a un ruso, un japonés, una señora de ascendencia negra americana, trabajando todos juntos por, con el propósito de paz, no solamente en la tierra, pero, pero en el espacio. Y eso fue algo muy revolucionario y también que inspiró a muchas personas. Yo creo que por eso es que la franquicia es tan es tan bien querida globalmente y ha podido vivir hasta ahora, hasta caer en manos de un director como JJ, que supo esa esencia, la respetó y esa fue la esencia que siempre mantuvo pendiente todos los días 
cuando íbamos a trabajar, a hacer nuestros personajes y hacer la película. Um, I think that, yo creo que lo que ayudó para yo hacer mi personaje más respetado y más... Eh, que fuera solamente autónomo, que fuera completamente autónomo a lo que yo soy como persona, es el no haber pensado en eso para nada. Porque se sabe que conscientemente, uno siendo artista, le va, va, a, haber, tra, va a haber cualidades o cosas tuyas que lamentablemente o afortunadamente le vas a dar al personaje que estás haciendo. Por lo tanto, mi trabajo como artista es mantener una neutralidad para que ustedes puedan sumergirse en este personaje y no verme a mí tras ello. Yo creo que la, lo que le incorporé fue la producción y fue más interno. El saber que soy una, muchacha, una mujer y también de descendencia latina y el llegar donde he llegado y trabajar y colaborar con, arti con artistas con los que estoy compartiendo la tarima en estos momentos es una bendición que algunas veces me despierta de noche de tanto agradecimiento que siento porque sé que en cualquier momento si, si el universo se hubiera movido de un, gr un grado hacia un lugar o a otro mi, mi destino hubiera sido diferente y estoy bien bendecida de que estoy aquí y yo siento que, lo, que es lo que más le puedo dar a mi gente es mantener neutralidad porque así llego más lejos y, y ya se sabe que soy latina por lo tanto quiero que todo el mundo se inspire artistas a que no quieran entrar por cualquier puerta porque son latinos sino entrar porque tienen mérito excel, de excelencia al igual que cualquier persona de cualquier otra cultura y que they just so happen to be fabulously latinos <risa> Yeah, I think there's a hopefulness to the world that Gene Roddenberry had that uh, there's, a, there's an earnest belief that humanity can achieve great things when they work together. And even though this is called Star Trek Into Darkness, um, there is, uh, you know, my character at the end has a, a moment to, to, that I hope is not too didactic, but it is definitely food for thought for, for people that have experienced pain and have experienced evil and wanted to seek revenge and have had that bloodthirst. And unfortunately, we live in a world today where we face terrorism, we face people that inflict this kind of psychological terror, this kind of physical terror upon us. And all these very human feelings of wanting to seek revenge, they're kind of metastasized in this very strong individual who is John Harrison. He's very much the dark side. And I think it, this 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 story even though it takes place in the future is so very earthbound it so very mu much brings up the salient issues of our time right now and it presents us with a choice of two different paths to go down and i think the great thing about star trek and what we say at the end about the five year mission is, is it's not to go out and seek violence to seek conflict to seek divisiveness to seek those things which break us apart it's to explore and to find new life and to find new civilizations and there is something within that that I think, I hope we speak to, I hope sets us apart from other, other um, films in, in this genre, and if people want to call it naive or hopeful or earnest or whatever, I have no problem with it because I think it is a lesson, it's a, a version of what our world can be that's always wonderful to hear because unfortunately we always seem to be wanting to tear each other apart for myriad reasons, everything from creed and color and race and sexuality onward, and I think Roddenberry's vision of a hope is very much very much a part of this.